What's up, Adalo makers? Today, I want to go over how to use groups and rectangles in the new Responsive Builder. Um, these work a little bit differently than they did in the Legacy Builder. Um, and the primary difference here is just that rectangles serve as somewhat of an auto group. Um, and they've kind of all, all, always done this, right? They've, they've um, anything that you place inside of a rectangle as the rectangle, you know, uh, as you change the size of it, it, it could kind of change the sizing of the components automatically inside of it. Um, it's just that now if we click on a rectangle and then go to the actual, the entire screen itself, you can see that rectangles show up as what's called a parent component and parent components. You can uh, always tell which components are a parent component by this little toggle drop down here. And you can see that inside this main area rectangle here, I've got a bunch of other different rectangles. And these are, uh, you know, I've got one for my pages, users, views, links, paid, all that sort of stuff here. Those are these rectangles. And then each inside of each of these, I've got, you know, uh, the text for users and the text for this 134 number here. Um, and so these really act like, like groups. Um, and uh, ellipses work this way, images work this way, rectangles work this way, um, and lists work this way as well. So um, if something is outside of this, you know, I can always click and drag uh, these things up and down inside the list and, uh, you know, add them to rectangles and, uh, and take them out of them. Um, but uh, these rectangles are really handy because um, as we discussed in the design workflow video, um, it really helps to think about your the content of your app or your web app uh, in terms of containers, right? These chunks of information that move around the screen as the screen size changes. And so uh, I've just got kind of a basic dashboard. You may, uh, you know, build something similar uh, like this. Um, or if you use, uh, you know, there, I'm sure that there's probably apps that you use on a daily basis that are formatted in this way. Um, you can do the same thing in your apps, right? Um, but what I wanted to point out is kind of the difference between using rectangles and groups and how that's different and when you may want to use one or the other. So it's really important to understand that rectangles have uh, uh, layout settings themselves that, that you can adjust. And all of the components inside that rectangle have to kind of uh, obey that, uh, you know, whatever the... Uh, the settings are for that, all right? So you'll notice that inside here, I've got this pages label here. Um, this is uh, actually set to stays fixed, so the width of this doesn't change as the screen changes, and it's anchored left inside this uh, inside this, this rectangle here, right? Um, and you'll notice if I click on this one, this one, the, again, the, the width resizing stays fixed, and it's anchored right, inside this rectangle, right? But the rectangle itself also has some layout settings. And this is set to scales with the parent. And the parent is going to be this big background rectangle that I've got acting as uh, the, the kind of the content area, right? And this one is set to scales with screen. So by default, uh, because the setting for this rectangle is set to scales with parent, it's going to inherit the properties or the settings, the scaling settings of this rectangle, right? So you'll notice that if I zoom out a little bit and click on this, uh, as I scale the screen, that rectangle changes size based on the screen size because it's set to scale with this rectangle as well, right? Now you'll notice that these down here are not set to that, right? These rectangles down here are set to stays fixed, right? And they're all set to anchor left, right? Because I don't want these things to shift over on top of one another or anything like that. I want them to stay exactly as they are, right? Now, inside of these rectangles, again, each of these has its own uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, setting for anchoring and different things like that. Um, but the one that affects it the most, I think, is this width resizing here, Um uh, especially if you've just got one component in here, uh, in each rectangle, right? So how would we want to use groups? Well, let's say that, you know, this looks fine on maybe desktop and tablet, right? But then as I get into the mobile size, you can see that I've kind of got these, um, you know, these square, these tiles here that 
you know, they kind of venture off the screen as the screen gets smaller. So um, what I'd really like to do is maybe take these and make them a group and bring only on mobile, bring these two tiles underneath these other two right here, right? And we can do this really easily with groups. So uh, one of the things that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select this rectangle. Uh, unlike the Legacy Builder, I don't have to select all the things inside it. I can just select just the rectangle. Uh, I'll hold down Shift and select this one as well. We will make this a group. And let's go ahead and do it the same with this one. It's not super necessary, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. All right. And one of the things that I want to do is even though these are, you know, these groups, uh, I don't want them to to change size necessarily. So I'm going to leave it stays fixed. Um, but I do want this group to be anchor left the same as uh, each of those tiles, right? So I'm going to anchor these to the left so they don't go over on top of one another. And we can always check this just by going in here and, you know, rotate, you know, sliding these out uh, just to make sure. Um, but what I want to do is on mobile, I want to go in here and select this mobile view here. And you can see that it goes off the screen here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this group here. I'm going to click, uh, sorry, double click to get into that, that background rectangle there. And I'm actually going to break this out using my custom layout settings here. And I'm going to leave all the settings for this the same. So it still stays fixed, anchored left. Except I'm going to use the custom positioning here and just kind of drop this, uh, you know, underneath this other, uh, this other tile here. All right. So... Now you'll notice that if I leave this alone here uh, and I go back to my screen, I'm going to stretch this out. And you'll notice that once we get to tablet view, that group of those rectangles pops below uh, the other one, right? And so this is kind of the difference between grouping and rectangles. Um, as a general rule of thumb, you don't need to use grouping as much as you did in, say, Legacy, uh, Legacy Builder, right? Um, grouping is really... Uh, specific. It has very specific use cases now. So um, this would be one of them, right, where you're trying to move whole chunks of information uh, into one area or another. Uh, if I just wanted to move one of these tiles, um, I, I could just, uh, I wouldn't even have to make it a group, right? I could just grab that rectangle, set some custom layout settings for it, and pop it beneath these other two. Um, but since I'm wanting to move two of them at the same time, it's easier just to group them together assign the, the settings to the group, and have both of them pop down here at once, right? Um, so uh, use grouping sparingly, but it is extremely useful uh, when you're wanting to adjust and really customize the way that an app works um, and, and how it responds to your user's screen size. So I hope that makes it a little bit more clear how uh, rectangles are different from groups. Um, I definitely use rectangles a whole lot more than uh, uh, than groups for sure. Um, but, uh, I hope that makes it a little bit more clear when to use groups versus when to use rectangles.